So hello and welcome back to Go Again Gaming. My name is As That Way, and uh, today we're going to be talking about one of the heroes from the um, Arcane Rising set. So this is the second set that was released with Fab, and this introduced uh, some Arcane style heroes that deal Arcane damage. So Arcane damage is like magical damage, so you can't block it with a normal physical attack. Or physical defense, should I say. So you do need some form of arcane defense if you're facing these heroes. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to block any of their attacks. Um, and the first one that we're going to be looking at is a hero called Kano, Drakai of Aether. Um, so let's just go on to the screen share. There he is, Kano, Drakai of Aether. So the awesome thing about Kano is that he can cast things at instant speed, so he cares about playing on your opponent's turn. Um, so this is something that is very, very new in uh, in conjunction to what we have been looking at in the past and what we have covered so far on this channel. Um, albeit it is fairly old in the grand scheme of things now, with where Flesh and Blood is now. But um, yeah, it's uh, awesome. So let's have a look at uh, Kano. So, descended from nobility, Kano was born with the power of the dragon's fire in his veins, able to shape the flames from the instant he drew his first breath. A cunning trickster, yet undeniably gifted with a connection to the Aether, he is both admired and scorned by the other Lord Wizards of the court. Um, so stay tuned for the lore video, which will um, precede this particular video, albeit with Kano's story. I think there's multiple stories that Kano's involved in. Um, so yeah, well, well, I don't know how we're going to sort of format that, but yeah, definitely stay tuned and you will see. So the hero highlights of Kano, he's an Aether to Arcane. Uh, so Aether is a central knowledge base of all the Arcane arts in Wraith, which, he, uh, which Kano draws from to summon Arcane damage amongst his other wizardry. Unlike melee fighters who trade blow using the combat chain, Defending arcane damage requires energy to be channeled through special equipment on items with arcane barrier to use um, or uh, or to use damage prevention effects. Um, so yeah, that's the good thing about Kano is that his attacks are going to be able to do direct damage. They can't defend against them, which can be a good or a bad thing because then they have a swath of cards to use against you because they know they're not going to be able to defend. So it can work either way, but it is a very, very cool mechanic, a arcane damage. Um, Master of Time. Kano is the first hero of Flesh and Blood who is able to play the game at instant speed, and playing games with his enemies and allies is what Kano lives for. An opponent who takes one step too many, pushes when they should hold, is overzealous in their onslaught, may find the jokes on them before they know it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it, playing you know playing cards in your opponent's turn is always going to be tricky. It's always going to be, it's always going to feel like you're in control, but you may sort of burn through your cards. You may sort of get overzealous in your efforts, as it does say here. So you do have to be careful as to what you're doing, but you can maintain that sort of control over the game, that dominance over the game if you're playing at instant speed. And then dragon blood. Only those with the blood of the dragon uh, can hold a position in the Drakai in the royal court of Volcor. Um, being a Drakai of Aether is one part training, one part lineage, and with it, Kano expands on the general knowledge base of the Aether to learn the arcane specialization of Draconic Magic. So he's got Dragon Blood in him as well, and he can sort of call upon that Draconic Magic, which is quite cool. So one really, really unique thing here is that the Kano hero has four intellect, like normal, but he only has 30 life. So thirty life, ten life difference. You'll get you're, you're starting on twenty five percent less life than normal heroes are. So that's got to say something to his abilities. And yes, he's playing at instant speed, um, and he's doing a lot of sort of unblockable damage because you do have to have arcane defense or arcane barrier to be able to stop this. Um, so yeah, I guess there is a, an upside to having an arcane style hero. And obviously, wizards and sort of those sort of style characters are not known for their constitution in the sort of Dungeons and Dragons uh, world. So having lesser health does make sense. But I would think that for having lesser health, you should have higher intellect. Uh, but maybe that's maybe that'll be broken with this card. We will we will see. Excuse me. 
So yeah, Wizard Hero, Kano. So uh, his ability is instant speed, so you can use this whenever you want. All you have to do is pitch three resources. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's a non-attack action card, you may banish it. If you do, you may play it this turn as though it were an instant, which is pretty ludicrous. So you can look at the top card of your of your deck. If it's non-attack action, you can banish it and you can play it at this turn of the, as though it were instant. So that's pretty badass. Turning the top card of your deck in, into an instant speed spell that's a non-attack action could be pretty good. Um, and again, just being able, if you've got nothing else to do, you can sort of look at the top card of your library by paying three resources and it could be a back-breaking card in the moment that you need it. So yeah, very, very impulsive, which is decent. Uh, it does cost quite a lot though, and there's no go again on there either. Uh, but it is an instant, it's not an action by the looks of it. So I imagine you could play this instant without having to use your action points. Because it's not an action, is it? No, no, so it's an instant. So I guess you could play it at any time. Uh, you don't have to worry about action points for it, which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Then we've got the young Kano, which is, uh, again, 4 intellect and 15 life in a blitz game. That's going to be a very, very quick game indeed. So we've got the wizard weapon here, uh, which is Crucible of Aether Wave, or Aether Weave, should I say. Um, it's a two-handed staff, so you can only use this one weapon if you're a wizard, if you're carrying this. And it's a once-per-turn instant, so you can only play this once per turn, but you can play it at any time during that turn. So you can play it on your turn, you can play it on their turn, back on your turn again. So you can, you can potentially activate this every single turn, which is quite good, because obviously you're playing at instant speed. Uh, and it costs one resource to activate. And it says the next card you played this turn with an effect that deals arcane damage instead deals that much damage plus one. So again, that's awesome with regards to... Um, because you can play at instant speed, you can then pitch a little... Uh, you, can, you can pitch one resource to give that arcane damage plus one, um, which is really, really good for stacking up the damage, especially because you're playing at instant speed. You're going to want to be trying to do damage every single turn. Um, so yeah, that's that's a pretty cool and thematic weapon, the Crucible of Aether Weave there. Um, so that's cool. Storm Striders. Um, so these are a Wizard Equipment legs. Um, so these are all the basically these are all the cards that you want to be including in your Kano deck. Uh, all of these cards down here are the ones you want to be including basically. Uh, so Storm Striders is a Wizard Equipment legs, and it's got an instant ability on there for one resource. Destroy Storm Riders. You may play your next wizard non-attack action card this turn as though it were an instant. Uh, so again, you've got uh, non-action uh, attack cards that aren't instant turn into instants, which is going to be good because there's going to be some powerful stuff in here. And of course, it has Arcane Barrier on there as well of two. So if your hero will be dealt Arcane Damage, you may pay two resources instead. If you do prevent two Arcane Damage, that source would deal. Um, so that's cool. I haven't seen Arcane Barrier yet because obviously I haven't gone through the Arcane Rising cards. But Arcane Barrier 2, if your hero will be dealt Arcane Damage, you may pay two resources if you do prevent two Arcane Damage. So whatever the Arcane Barrier value is, you can pay that amount of resources, I imagine, to prevent that much damage. Um, so that's quite good. And I imagine you would need a lot of sort of Arcane Protection if you're playing in an Arcane Rising sealed event or a pre-release event. I don't know how or if the um, Arcane Rising characters are being used and constructed at the moment, but... Um, it's still a really, really cool concept, so would love to see more sort of Arcane stuff, and I'm sure they will as well, because Wizards and stuff are always popular in sort of fantasy games, so that's cool. Robe of Rapture, so this is a Wizard Equipment chest, um, and it's got action, destroy Robe of Rapture and gain three resources. Uh, doesn't have go again though, which is a bit, sh b b b bit shabby. Um, destroy, destroy action, destroy robe of rapture, gain three resources with no go again. So that just fizzles, right? Surely no, because you can play instants, can't you? Yeah. So I guess the instants would work in that in that regard, um, which is quite good actually, because you can play at instant speed. So gaining three resources from a card that's just sat there on your on your chest is pretty good. So yeah, looking at it now, because you can play instants, instant speed, you don't need action points. For instant speed stuff, so that's uh, so that's good. And you've got arcane barrier on there as well for one, so you can pay a resource every time you hit with an arcane damage to mitigate that damage for one, which is quite good. Uh, then we got uh, a Kano specialization card, the Blazing Aether, 
Um, so this costs zero resources. It can be pitched for one resource. It can be used as a defense for three. And it's a Kano specialization card, so nobody other than Kano can use this. Uh, and it says, deal X arcane damage to target hero, where X is the amount of arcane damage you have dealt to that hero this turn. So yeah, very, very good if you sort of use this with Kalo's ability and you can play this at instant speed. Combine that of all the other arcane damage or potentially doing instant speed, this is doing more arcane damage um, after that. So yeah, that's that's pretty, pretty decent. Uh, so that's cool. We've got Sonic Boom, um, so this is um, can be pitched for two resources, it costs two, um, two uh, resources to play, and of course, I haven't mentioned on the previous videos, because I didn't really do much research, is that these will have different versions. You'll have a blue version, a yellow version, and a red version, each will have different pitch values, different resource costs, and different sort of abilities on them, depending on what they are. So. Um, Blue is normally your early game stuff, yellow is your mid game stuff, and red is your end game stuff. So, yeah, well, I'll probably go into that into more detail as the channel progresses. Um, but yeah, this is one of the uh, one of the ones that uh, fit into that category. Sonic Boom. So um, it says th deal three damage, arcane damage, to target opposing hero. So this is, this is not an instant. But obviously you can turn it into instance through sort of Kano's other abilities, so that's quite good. And then it says, if Sonic Boom deals damage, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a wizard non-attack action card, you may banish it. If you do, you may play it this turn as though it were an instant, and it deal and it costs X resource points less to play, where X is the damage dealt by Sonic Boom. Yeah, so again, turning stuff into instance, reducing the cost as a result of the damage that you've done already through Arcane Means. Yeah, it's going to be good. Sonic Boom. Forked Lightning, pretty decent. So this is the higher end of the Forked Lightning uh, spectrum. Uh, I'm not sure if this has other cards or other versions, but yeah, it can be pitched for one, uh, is played for three, can be used as a defense for three, but it says deal two damage to target hero. Deal two damage to target hero. Arcane damage, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's quite good. And the fact that I like the fact that it's two damage, two damage. So they have to actually use two lots of... Um, if they do have Arcane Barrier, they do have to use two lots of resources because you're getting hit by two separate instances of Arcane Damage, which is quite cool. Then we've got uh, Lesson in Lava. So this is another Kado specialization because obviously it's Fire, it's Lava, it's Draconic, uh, and that's Lesson in Lava. So this is the yellow version. So this can be pitched for two resources, but it costs one to play, and it can be defended with... Um, you can use it to defend for three. And it's a Kado specialization, so it can only be used in Kano decks. And it says, deal three arcane damage to target opposing hero. It's an action card. Uh, and then it says, if lesson, um, if lesson in Lava deals damage, you may search your deck for a wizard card with resource cost equal to or less than the damage dealt by Lesson in Lava. Reveal it, then shuffle it, and put it on top of your deck. So that is brilliant. Um, so you're basically... You know, best case scenario, you're searching your deck for a, another card of resource cost three because you're doing three arcane damage, which is going to be hard to block. So yeah, basically this reads: go and get a card of a resource cost three and put it on top of your deck for next turn, which is quite good. Which then can actually be cast with Kano's other ability. Look at the top card of your deck if it's not an action, you can play it as a an instant. So that's again pretty decent. So yeah, very very good. Lesson in lava. And then we've got another suggestion here, Tome of Aether Wind. Uh, so this is a wizard action. Uh, it can be uh, pitched for one, and it costs zero to play, but it's the red version, so I imagine there's other versions as well. Uh, it can be used as a defense for two, and it says choose two. You may choose the same mode more than once. That's very Magic the Gathering. Uh, the next card you play this turn with an effect that deals arcane damage instead deals that much damage plus one, or draw a card. Um, so that's, yeah, and that's good. It's sort of modal... Uh, modal cards of something that we've seen in Magic the Gathering where you have a list of options and you choose one or uh, one or two for instance and uh, this one is choose two you may choose the same mode more than once so that's good so borrowing some sort of uh, text from uh, Magic the Gathering there but yeah this a uh, cool looking deck uh, Kano Drakai of Aether and it's going to be interesting to see what sort of space um, and and um, what sort of stuff they do with live turtles and intellect 
maybe it's a completely separate video as to what they could be do what what they could be doing what they should be doing how they can balance it will they ever do this again where they have a lesser life total um because of the play style because of what they're doing because yeah it seems like Kano is going to be able to activate on everyone else's turn so i guess they had to put the timer down on on Kano because of the fact that you can do that so it's going to be interesting and bizarre at the same time to see how that is and if that is balanced um and will we see cards in the future that say 35 you know 30 life and 5 intellect or 20 life and 6 intellect you know where where do you push those boundaries that's another discussion entirely really is you know will they sort of play around with this more the sort of life and intellect values um so yeah that is Kano and um if you go on to the because he's one of the cards from the main set there is actually a tab here that you click you can click and and you can click learn and it tells you basically what all the cards do and what they what you should be doing like arcane damage and stuff so that's why this website is really really good for learning the characters for getting into the lore uh, etc let me just go back onto the main screen here so yeah Kano looks really really cool and um, definitely expect some lore videos coming out with Kano he's got a lot of stories going on a lot of backstory with this character um, so yeah looking forward to delving into that but thank you very much for tuning in today uh, it's going to be interesting to see where we go with wizards uh, and uh, how much support they get and another thing is as well that Kano is a wizard but he is very much fire element, burning your face. So have they shoehorned themselves into a bit of a hole there with the fact that Kano is a wizard, um, and yet he's using sort of fiery abilities? Because later on down the line, when other wizards come out, are they going to be the same? Are they going to be the same um, element as Kano? Because... You could argue that if they did do a sort of ele like elementalist route uh, later on down the line, like fire, ice, earth, and water, fire, ice, earth, and thunder, that Kano should be in the fire wizard, uh, should be a fire wizard, should have access to fire spells, because he is the Drakai of Aether. Uh, he has got dragon blood, etc. So it's interesting that they've chosen to go down the wizard route but have him all fire. So, yeah, that is an interesting choice. It's going to be going to be interesting to see how they go back to that at a later stage. Why they, they could have just done they could have just called him a fire wizard um and gave him access to fire cards potentially, but I guess that could have probably would have been too early to do something like that, but we will see. That that again, that's that that that's another that another discussion. Uh, later on down the line when I've got more knowledge as to whether dual classes um, and the classes that are already out is it going to be worth going into dual classes is it going to saturate thing, uh, desaturate things and sort of um, are the old legacy heroes going to be sort of pushed out for these new hybrid classes and what have you so is power creep going to be a thing loads of things to talk about on the channel but thank you very much for tuning in that has been Kano, Drakai of Aether and yeah, lots more catching up to do. Thank you for your time. We'll see you next time. Peace.